students, hi, this is Mr. Bob. In this video, I'm gonna talk through how you go about using Google Sheets to propagate the uncertainty for when you're using, uh, when you have a data set and you have to uh, do a linearization test that involves a non-symmetrical function. When I say non-symmetrical functions, I'm talking about things like sine, cosine, or logarithmic functions. So I'm just gonna walk through what I did here and show you. Here's an example that's very common uh, in the IB physics curriculum, which is, let's say you take some data, uh, you shine a laser through a substance into another substance to kind of uh, look at the index of refraction, what happens, and Snell's law. And so notice here is three data points that, um, that I made up here. Uh, you have the instant angle, 20, 25, and 30 in table one here, and then two trials of the refracted angle. Um, you can see there the data set. So let's say I need to do a linearization test uh, with a min-max gradient to see uh, to what extent this data set follows Snell's law and perhaps to calculate something using the slope of the line, of the best fit line. So what I need to do is I need to transform this data. Okay, so notice I have two trials here. So I'm going to get an average of those two trials by basically coming down here to table two. And by the way, I just wanna emphasize that the way I did this and the way you wanna try and do this is uh, let the spreadsheet, uh, the power of the spreadsheet work for you. So notice here, I'm gonna use this average function to kind of average the two, and then I can just spread that like we've talked about earlier in the year, like so. Now let's assume um, we can do the same thing over here for the raw uncertainty. Notice we're gonna do the maximum number minus the minimum number divided by two. So for the first setting of 20 degree instant angle, we get a raw uncertainty of three, 33 minus 27 divided by two is three, et cetera, et cetera. Now a helpful thing to do when you're gonna propagate uncertainty through a non symmetrical function is to make sure you get the percent uncertainty. So that's what I did here in this column. I just calculated the percent uncertainty for each of these trial settings and notice it's different. Now, as I've talked about earlier in the year, you want to make sure at this point, you make a choice, to simplify your life and to just um, make it easier with you on Google Sheets, which is you want to apply one uh, consistent uncertainty to all of your data points, okay? And so uh, the two guidelines that I suggest to students is looking at your data set. Oftentimes students will say, well, I'm gonna take the biggest of the value and apply it to all of them. And you can do that. Uh, another possible scenario, another possible route to take is to say, I'm gonna take the average and apply that. And so in this case, that's what I did. I took the average of these 3% uncertainties, comes out to 5%. And so I put that in yellow just to say, hey, that's the percent uncertainty I'm gonna use for all. If we go down here to table three, you're gonna notice I have basically taken the steps to uh, do the linearization test, which is if we go down here, let's go down here below first and look at the bottom left corner here. Here I have Snell's law and I've rewritten it. Sine theta one equals N2 over N1 times sine theta two. Notice the color coding here. This corresponds very nicely to Y equals MX plus B. So notice my X values would be the sine of the refracted angles, which is that second column in table three. My Y values are the sine of the instant angle, which is the first column, and I've color coded the columns too. So how did I take this sign? I do wanna point this out. If you go into Google Sheets and you type in sine of those numbers, you're gonna take, it's gonna assume that the angle is in radians. So Google Sheets assumes the angle is in radians. So notice what I've done here. I've basically taken, I'm gonna do this again just so I walk you through it. So I said equals sine and now I want to take the sine of A11, that's the cell, but I have to convert that from degrees to radians. So I multiply it to convert from degrees to radians. I can multiply it by pi. Pi goes on the top. Okay. Uh, and, and the way this works in Google Sheets is you do pi with the two parentheses brackets, and that tells the computer that it's actually the value of pi and not just the letters pi. And then you divide it by 180, right? Because pi radians is the same as 180 degrees. We've done that before. So I do an end parentheses, boom. And then I get that. Uh, and then I can pass that on or, or copy that formula across as I need to. And you can see the end result here. Your numbers should be between zero and one. If they're not, you did something wrong, okay? Now notice I've taken the third column here in table three. I've taken that average uncertainty that I chose and I've put it to be the same for all of them. And so then to get the raw uncertainty for the sine of the refracted angle for my error bars that I need to plot, 
I'm going to take that percent uncertainty, multiply it by the value, and get these numbers. And then I'm just going to take the average of the raw uncertainty. Now, some people could say you could have taken the the um, let's just do it here. 10%. Notice, notice I'm basically copying what the actual percent uncertainty. Ooh, that was bad. Okay, there we go. 10%, 5%, and 1%. Right. I could just say, hey, this is what this is what this is. Okay, and notice I get 0 0.05, 0 0.03, 0 0.01. The end result is the same. If I'm going to take the average at the end, uh, the average raw uncertainty is going to be 0 0.03. So now I'm ready to plot uh, the data in table three in a graph. So notice I go over here and I've already started this. Um, so when I select my data, this is what's going to be really important for you to make sure. Remember, the blue values, that second column is the x value. So when I add the x axis, what I want to do is I want to add the sign of the refracted angle. Notice it's kind of pointed it out for me. So I'm going to take that as so. And notice my series, my Y values, is the sign of the instant angle, which is what I want. So that looks good. Notice you use row 16 as headers, use column B as labels. That works. If you don't have numbers across here and up here, then something's wrong. And then you're going to go from there to customize. You're going to go to the legend. Excuse me, not the legend. You're going to go to series. And we scroll down here. I always like to make my point size smaller when I get to this spot. I could make it four points, something like that. Okay. I want error bars. Now it's going to ask me, do I want a type? I want percent or constant? I want a constant error bar. And what's the value going to be? 0 0.03. That's what I decided. Notice, boom, the error bars come in. And then I do want a trend line. And I want it to be linear. And look, lo and behold, it's looking pretty linear. Awesome. And then I do want to get a label using the equation. And notice it's up there. <laughs> okay. And let's just see if I can do something. Yes, let's make that bigger. I'm just going to make that really large because that's a really important piece of data there that I want to um, look at. Okay. So from there, you would then go on and follow the instructions that I've given in other videos about how to do a max gradient line, min gradient line, right? You're going to create these columns here, these additional columns. And um, create those data points. And obviously your data set is probably going to have more than three data points. So you're going to do this more with more data points. Um, and then the meaning of the slope of your best fit line and your max values and your min values are going to be things that are of importance to you to use in your analysis of your experiment, right? And so obviously, and through other means, I have told you how to do that and given you clues and guidance on what to do. So hopefully you've learned from this video how to take an original data set and how to propagate the uncertainty, especially when we're talking about propagating uncertainty for a non-symmetrical function. I forgot to go over this really quickly, but basically this is the IB guidance that says if you have a non-symmetrical function, it's okay to approximate it at the high school level to say that the percent uncertainty of the original value is the same as the percent uncertainty of the result that you get after applying that function. So in other words, for our example, the percent uncertainty in the sine of theta is equal to the percent uncertainty in theta. Okay, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed.